Hey everybody, this is Zach Rizet with Buildbox. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the five things that I wish somebody had told me when I was first getting into game development. First on the list is getting published. The best way to have success in this industry is to have a lot of people playing your game. And the best way to have a lot of people playing your game is to get published. So let's talk about that a little bit. So if you're wanting to get published, the thing that you gotta do is research publishers. So it's a good idea to go to the different websites and check out the different publishers and what games that they're putting out right now. See what's doing well for them and the type of trends that they're going for. What is a publisher looking for in a game? And so when you're making your game, it's good to have these things in mind. When you're creating your game, you should be thinking, well, which publisher will like this? Which publisher do I want to send this game to? And it's really good to actually play these games and test out these games and see what they're like. So that was the first thing that I wish somebody had told me was getting published. I really wish somebody had mentioned that to me in the beginning. Now the second thing, the second thing that I wish somebody had told me when I was first getting started with game development is to prioritize gameplay and to be unique. It's super important to focus on gameplay over artwork or storyline or anything like that. And let me show you what I mean by that. I think we all know this lovable character, Mario, and if you actually study the game Mario, it's based around one main game mechanic, and that's jumping. You actually have to jump onto the flagpole to beat the level. So that's one example of where form follows function. The way something works decides how something is going to look and behave. And so another great example of this is the character Navi from Legend of Zelda, which is based around the Z-targeting system for the game. They knew that they wanted to have a Z-targeting system in the game, and so they created the Navi character to sort of augment that. Another example of this is Legend of Zelda, where you have Young Link and Old Link. Once Young Link lifts the Master Sword out of the stone, he's transported seven years into the future, where he's now a teenager Link. This happened because the game creator knew that they wanted to have Young Link and Teenager Link inside the game and to be able to play both, and so they made a storyline that made that happen. You want to create a new game mechanic that is unique and fun and innovative, and then once you've got that set, then you can start thinking about artwork and all of that. My third thing is to prototype before polishing, all right? And here's what I mean by that. So, you've got your publisher picked out and now you're ready to start building your game, okay? But before you just start jumping in there and start putting your game together, now is the time where you can think about what characters you're gonna use, what obstacles, enemies, now, it's time to start prototyping. Don't go straight into the building and polishing thing. You need to start testing things out. So here's how we do that. Okay, so the first thing that I would do is open up an illustrator, all right? This is the drawing board, all right? So you started the drawing board and this is gonna be your platform to prototype and to test things out and see how things look before you just start tossing a bunch of images into Buildbox. So let's say I have a portrait game. Okay, something like this, all right, and I'm going to just start with a basic background, I don't know, maybe something, something soft, nothing too saturated, okay, and maybe I'll add a light gradient in, just for funsies, okay, that's uh, a little bit more than I want, there you go, that's not bad, okay, so now, this is where I kind of start testing out shapes and testing things out, on how they will look and feel inside this game. So let's say I've got a character who's running on a platform, this little purple platform. He's a little ball character. Maybe he's not running, he's just a little ball. See, something like this. Okay, so this is kind of like the basic idea, is you work with an illustrator and you kind of start experimenting with different shapes and different feels, and this is where you want to start prototyping instead of doing it within Buildbox, because then it's a, it's a lot more difficult to change things. You can't change the color of an object or an action or anything like that within Buildbox. Once you drop those images in, you can delete those images, but you can't, change, you can't render them a different color or anything like that. So it's important to kind of do this prototyping thing inside an Illustrator, okay? And when you not only are you working with shapes and the different obstacles and stuff that you'd be playing in your game, but you also want to experiment with colors, right? And so this is a great website for that. 
that uh, Trey actually sh was the first one to show me this. Um, a great website for that is colorlovers.com. So you want to type in colorlovers.com, okay? And this will take you to this great website where you can just search different color palettes. So I'll search forest, something like that, and check out these different palettes. Okay, that's awesome. I really, really like this palette, this enchanted forest palette. So I might, uh, might click on it and then just, you know, the a real simple way to do this, you can copy it and save it to the desktop or just take a quick screenshot and then toss it in to your Illustrator and then you can just use an eye dropping, the eye dropping tool to experiment with colors. So let's say I want to change this to be this purple instead. Okay. Then you use the eyedropper tool and then just select your different purples. Okay. So a good, good way to do that is to just select all of them at once. So hit command. Let's see here. There we go. I got all three of them selected and then now I use the eyedropper tool. And you can mess around with different colors. Okay. And so this is a great way to use color theory. All right, and you want to choose colors that are not too saturated. All right, you want to look at different publishing companies uh, that are currently coming out with great games and see the type of colors they're using. And you'll notice that they're muted colors, they're not saturated. And so this is the ty type of stuff that you want to do when you are prototyping. Okay, so you've picked out your publisher. You've created your unique game mechanic and now you're done prototyping. You've tested out your game over and over again. Now, the fourth thing that I wish somebody had told me when I first got started was that you need to have people test out your game. You need to have lots of people play your game and test it out and give you feedback. It's so important. There were so many people that played my first game and were like, you need to fix this and you need to do this and why don't you add this and this isn't working and this isn't working. Oh God. So yeah, that's the fourth thing is have people test out your game like crazy. Make sure you have people test out your game early on and that's why you wanna put your game onto your phone or onto your tablet. So those are my four things. My fifth thing and probably the most important of these is stick with it. All right, don't give up ever. All right, if you have a good idea and you believe in it, persistence is the key. A color switch, the color switch guy, David Reichelt, before he became very, very successful with color switch, he must have made like 40 or 40 something games before that that did not have a lot of success. So there is a learning curve. This is about creating a career for yourself, a viable business. All right, the odds are that you're not going to make one game and then make millions of dollars and then just, okay, I'm gonna go buy a boat. All right, so the point is stick with it. All right, because I believe in you, the Billbox team believes in you, and you just have to believe in yourself and have the perseverance to see it through to fruition. You got this. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was useful. If you wanna see more videos like this, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Like and subscribe. <laughs>